First memories of Josh is I met him at the Bowl Hills bike track in Sheffield. Uh, just up from my house and like, yeah, well, I just saw him and like, I guess his mates at the time and they all had long hair and you know what I mean? All that stuff and like, I had long hair as well. I went up to him because he had, he had a metal t-shirt on. I can't remember what it was, maybe a Lama God t-shirt. I was like, oh, do you like metal? And he was like, yeah, I love metal. And I, I honestly, I thought we were a girl. And he'll probably have told you that I came up to him and he thought it was a little girl or something like that, do you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but um, yeah, just went up to him. I was like, oh, like, do you want to have a jam sort of thing? And then like, I had an uh, electric drum kit in my house. And I was like, bullshit. No, you aren't. He's like, come to my house, I'll show you. Because it's way, way before camera phones and everything, so he couldn't show me. So I was like, right, come on then. So I went to his house and he, he had Roland, synthetic like synth pad drum kit and I was like whoa and then I was just like let's start a band. But it was a bit weird because Josh was like 11 years old and Con was 17. <laughs> um, and then Con, shortly after that Con actually joined my school. He was a sick former and I was in like doing GCCs or whatever so he was like the other metal dude that was charging around with uh, long hair and, and Josh was like his uh, child sidekick. I was in like a like an English A-level class or something. And Wilkie had been naughty, so he'd got sent out of his class and he had to come and sit in our class. And I was just like, Wilkie, when he walked in. And he had dreadlocks, like down to him, it looked hilarious. I guess we used to like cross paths at gigs and stuff like that. It was just like some little kid who'd have like the massive hoodie on, like big corn hoodie or something like that, with like big dreadlocks and shit, and like a tiny little kid. Charlie and I were already in Malevolence, but we were teenagers, so 13 or 14, and we were playing the local like rock gigs that we could get on. So there's a venue in Boardwalk, and we happened to play with Con and Josh's band. We were called Decimate, and um, we used to play together shows in Sheffield, like under the Boardwalk, the Boardwalk, just little metal gigs. So we ended up being friends through that. Decimate played, I don't really remember much of the set, but I'm fairly certain he stage dived like, and just absolutely slapped the wooden floorboards of this pub. I don't know how old he would have been, maybe like 12 or 13, you know? <laughs> and yeah, and then eventually we just coincided and now everyone's in the band. <laughs> Big bands that I loved as a kid that didn't jump around on ego risers, they just had the full, like, Whoa, like walls and walls of cabs and I remember my friends once went to um, they went to watch Slayer and they had like this massive wall of cabs that made an inverted cross and it was hung from the from like the stage and it was just incredible I just think rather than all the stage props and the fire that people have like funky microphone stands and that I just want to have cabs I really like the look of my Laney rig do you know what I mean because it all matches Everything's really nice and pristine. I think like the look of it is clean, but it also suits the metal vibe that we're going for. And we've also obviously, now we've got the artwork on the cabs. It just makes the whole stage show look way better. And we sort of decided to use that texture as, you know, our stage thing. We have obviously the album artwork behind, so it just works that we have the, the album artwork on the cabs as well. And it has this all this blue texture. So yeah, thank, thank Laney Amplication for that one. Good British company good British players. There you go. What more could you want? Back in the day, my, my goals for the band, or like me as a musician in any band really, obviously, uh, were to have a CD you could buy in HMV and then to play at download. And then sort of done that ages ago now and I've not really had any other goals. Honestly, all of the dreams that I had as a teenager for, you know, my rock band, metal band fantasies, most of them have been achieved. You know, you meet your heroes and everything and like you play with all these bands that you looked up to and like Matt Heafy from Trivium's on our new record and it's like we love Trivium as kids and you just work your way up through that to where your heroes become your friends and then you just think, what, what, how can you even get bigger? Well, it's unrealistic, innit? But like, play with Pantera. Do you know what I mean? Or something like that, but like, can't be done anymore. Well, not with the, you know, the original. But like, I guess Metallica, you know, do like, 
just the top tier stuff really I suppose you know I've just be able to put it out to as many people as possible and like you know have a good time while I'm doing it. So it'd be nice to do our own festival and it'd be I don't know of a scale similar to this and then be the headline and be able to have it exactly how we want it in any way. We always talk about we'd like to do our own festival, like the one we just did, went to with Bring Me The Horizon. You know, have the actually fe festival set up, you know, the music we want, the bands we want, the vibe we want, it'd be incredible. Big festival in Bali, have it at like a big resort, infinity pool, and instead of like, because in Bali you get these resorts where there's an infinity pool that leads onto the beach, different tiers, VIP at the back, bottle of champers, and just get all like Lamagard, Trivium, Hatebreed. Crowbar, get all, all the top massive bands to play it and it'd be sick. And then afterwards, massive DJ set, loads of bass line, be wicked, big party. Tonight, I'm expecting it to be absolutely wild. I think it's just gonna surpass all expectations. Pack the tent out, massive circle pit, big sing-alongs. Gonna be a contender for the best malevolent show ever. If you haven't heard of us and you don't know who we are, you're still going to get involved and join the party and it's going to be amazing. Massive circle pit around the sound desk. <laughs> that's, that's my main goal. I want that to happen.